Visit the studio of artist Drea LaRose. Alicia Lea shares her experience opening up an art business. And catch a performance from the Insolent Willies. It's all ahead on this episode of AHA, a house for arts. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris fisher Melisardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. m and Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts, and we invite you to do the same. I'm Matt Rogowitz, and this is AHA, a house for arts, a place for all things creative. Today we begin in Troy, New York, to visit with artist and curator, Drea LaRose. A lot of the work that I'm interested in is kind of balancing the differences between analog and digital work. I'm so interested in the idea of simulations. I like adding confusion to the image and it kind of helps create that pause to really consider what it is that we're looking at. One of my favorite things is uh, going to Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. I love going to their flooring department and taking a look at all of their, um, you know, like the free samples that you can look at. I love that it's a ceramic tile trying to look like wood or trying to look like brick. I've always found that just really fascinating. So that's kind of, what I like to do in my own work um, is show a representation of something, but it's not actually the thing. I might be the only one that finds that fascinating, uh, but I, I love doing it. I love looking at materials and really thinking about, is that actually the material that we're looking at or is it you know, a simulation of something else? My dad is an architect. So I think a lot of that has to do with my interest in art. Um, I always grew up seeing all of his, um, all of his drawings, all of his scale models. It was just something that uh, I was always used to seeing visually. So I'm really interested in high contrast, hard geometries, hard lines, things like that. Usually I start my process with an image that I've scanned, like wood, cardboard, things like that. Or uh, recently, I've been getting into using my own photography. So a lot of the images that you might see recently are from a trip that I went to in Southern Utah. So a lot of Antelope Canyon. When I take these images and start to play around with them in Photoshop, uh, you see a lot of computer generated things. So I love using, you know, drop shadows. I love using different types of gradients, different types of patterns. Even though it is digital, I still think and work like a painter. Um, it might not be apparent in the work, but you know, when I'm in Photoshop, uh, playing around with layers and colors and erasing and adding, that to me is a very painterly thing to do. And then it's important for me to digitally output into a, a physical material so that it goes back into the real world. It casts a real shadow. I'm not trying to hide the fact that these are digitally made. Um, and some of my works in particular, that kind of grid that you see in the back of uh, Photoshop, that pops up a lot in my work. I think it's quite fun. You know, I think that's really important when you need to make work. If you're not having fun, then, you know, what are you doing? Uh, but I think there is a deeper meaning to it. I think a lot about this idea of the infinite scroll. Um, think of Instagram, for example. Um, you can just spend all of this time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And for me, that's fascinating and terrifying at the same time. My work, for me, it's a way to create a pause. To kind of see all of these elements, you know, take a step back. We aren't looking at the real thing. We're looking at a representation of the thing. And we're so used to it. Um, and again, you know, that's, it's incredible now with everything happening in AI and computer-generated work. 
um, but it's also, you know, good to, you know, recognize the real as well. You know, we're so used to looking at representations of things that, um, in my work, I like to, again, create that pause. We are at 68 Second Street, Second Street Studios, and uh, we also started The Hallway. It is quite literally a hallway in a brownstone in downtown Troy. It makes for very interesting exhibitions. It is a small space, but it's a fun space. We thought, like, what can we do a little bit more to help other artists, you know? It's really hard being an artist. A lot of people have a nine to five, um, whether that be teaching or something completely outside the field. Like for me, I, you know, I bartend. That's, that's my nine to five. So we wanted to be able to provide a space for people to show their work without, you know, charging these huge fees. And we wanted it to be artist run. We wanted it to be a little alternative, a little fun. Uh, so yeah, we opened in January, 2020. We are open the last Friday of every month for Troy Night Out. Generally like six to eight o'clock. We have about five shows a year. We are fully booked for this year, which is really exciting. Um, and a lot of the time we do an open call. Uh, so it's always free to apply to the hallway. That's really important for us. This is the second annual Artist Behind the Scenes. This show is really, um, really special to me. I came up with the idea a year ago, mainly to expose the fact that so many of our art institutions, galleries, museums, shops, they're all run by artists. Um, a lot of them have a nine to five, you know, and working in these environments as someone who runs a studio, you know, sometimes your work never, you don't, you don't have the opportunity to show your work a lot. You know, you're so busy trying to help others. So the point of the show was to be able to kind of give back to the artists that are running these spaces for us. So this round is a couple artists from Albany Barn and a lot of artists from Arlene's. And it was so much fun to work with them. Uh, they were so excited to be a part of it. We can have an opening of 70 people coming in, which is, which is so much fun. Alicia Leah is an artist and the founder of Paint Cohoes, an art studio and gallery located in Cohoes on Remsen Street. Jade Warwick spoke with Alicia to learn more about her journey from graffiti artist to business owner. Welcome to a House for Arts today. Hello, how are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm excited to talk to you all things art and a little bit about Paint Cohoes. But to begin, I would love to know what are your artistic focuses and what's your favorite medium? So I love to play in all mediums. I don't shy away from anything. I love getting my hands messy and dirty. I love exploring new mediums, but my favorite is aerosol. I love playing with spray paint. So much fun. Spray paint. Okay, yeah. so what's your favorite? So as a person who also loves spray paint and graffiti, so what are some of your favorite things about spray paint? So I love how quick and easy you can get paint on a wall, right? That's pretty amazing. I love the aestheticness of it. I like love how unconventional the tool is to use in art. Uh, and I do have a little bit of a background in graffiti, so. Give us a little yeah. bit about your background. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. um, I was in school for art and I was looking for a sense of community within the arts because I was a little unconventional and I'm very unapologetically myself and sometimes I can be deemed as too much for people, mm -hmm. right? So first of all, graffiti is art that can be seen and accessible to everybody mm -hmm. and also against societal norms or what's socially acceptable. So I already felt like I didn't fit in. It felt um, as an art form that I was able to express myself wholly in. And also painting with other graffiti artists, it didn't matter if I was good at letters or not. Like they were just happy to have me uh, be a part of the group and to grow with them and to evolve with them. Um, as I was learning the art of graffiti. Yeah, I will say that the street art and more urban graffiti art world is pretty accepting. You know, we're all just like a band of misfits who all yes, just want to just yep. like explore and succeed creatively together. So what were some differences that you saw in the graffiti world versus kind of the 
fine arts world since you kind of dipped your toes in both. Yeah, so the really cool thing about the graffiti world is that you get a sense of community, you're, you're growing together, you're going out, you're getting that endorphin rush, um, and then you're creating accessible art and you're also creating a network within other cities. So I'm traveling, right, and I'm meeting other artists and I'm networking in a, in a more acceptable way for me. Um, whereas the fine arts, it almost was like a prove yourself sort of deal. Um, I come in with a lot of energy and it, I just didn't fit in. Um, I'm not saying the pretentious attitude uh, bleeds into all of the capital region because shout out to Tony Adesicio from Albany Center Tony. Gallery. I love Tony. He's amazing. <laughs> and too. I know, and he has helped me as an artist so much. I would not be where I am today if Tony had not helped me out. So just shout out to Tony there real quick. Um, but I did notice a lot of other pretentiousness in other spaces where they weren't accepting of new ideas or new types of art. Um, or just pushing the limits of, of what it was like as contemporary art in the capital region. But I'm noticing a difference now, which is really great. Yes, there is a shift changing it with, uh, within the uh, capital region, which I am also witnessing mm -hmm. and I love to see it. So you're saying like more in the graffiti world, the street art world, it was just more accepting. It was, yeah, yeah. You general. didn't have to be like, there's obviously an ego that comes into the graffiti world. Um, but when you're within a crew, it's kind of, they become like your family. I was homeless at one point and I was putting myself through college while I was working. Um, and that was really hard and not having that support system from family because they're going through their own things at that time and they weren't able to be there for me. Um, I don't judge or blame anybody for the position I put myself in. I wanted to go to school, so inevitably I had to do certain things to be able to go. Mm -hmm. And I was able to create a family of likeness through graffiti but with them. That's awesome. Yeah. That's also a really yeah. beautiful story too. So let's talk a little bit about paint. So Woo. what is it and how did it get started? All right, so Paint Hose is a studio and gallery. Um, studio because we offer an array of classes and space for people to come create in. It is a working studio for myself. I like to create in there. We are also a gallery because we exhibit local and non-local artists and we do not discriminate on where you are in your path as an artist. We want everyone to feel safe and comfortable to be able to creatively express themselves within the space. So um, a little bit about how I always wanted to have a space like right? I craved a space yes. like that. And I didn't have anything in the capital region that I could go to. So I'm the kind of person where I'm like, Ugh. I'm more of a, what am like, I gonna do, do next? Yeah. yeah, a let's do it sort of situation. And, uh, but also I gotta be smart about it, right? Because I need to create revenue to keep the space going. Um, and I kind of always took jobs, besides my time at Starbucks, um, <laughs> where <laughs> I could take my skill sets and apply it to like my higher purpose, which I felt deep inside my soul, so I always wanted to have a place, um, a creative space. So, and I have an educational background. I worked with children since, I mean, babysat all through high school. I taught early child education from 18 years old up until I, 26, I think. Um, I still work with children, uh, but I got out of this is the schools um, and started working with not-for-profits and working at MySpace, um, doing classes and stuff. Awesome. Well, I love that yeah. paint. And it, does, it exists actually in Cohoes, correct? Yes. All right. There we go. Right on Remsen Street. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yeah. What, what happened, well, how did the name come to be? So the idea was to potentially, because um, I like to think, like, I'm like, oh, here's an idea. I always think outside of that, like, how can this expand and grow? And I thought of the idea of maybe not necessarily franchising, but like an idea of being able to franchise the business and bring mm. in other cities and other places and have um, a model or a setup that other people can adopt to make the arts more accessible within their communities while creating revenue. Ah, oh, so like yeah. Paint Albany, Paint yeah. Troy, Paint Cahoes. Yeah, Paint LA. You know? Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah. I, 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 yeah, but because sometimes as an artist, it's hard to uh, have the confidence to be able to, to effectively create revenue um, and to be actively involved within your community, so, in your creative community. Do you ever, I guess, have any conflicting feelings about as an artist, like focusing on the revenue business side, you know, some artists are some artists are kind of stuck in the middle. Some artists are like, oh, I would never, you know, I don't yeah. even care. I would never create for anybody but myself. And yeah, then you have some artists who are like, yeah, I, like art should be should be able to be a business, and you should be able to monetize off of your work because that's how we're living. Absolutely, so what are your that's like any um, profession, right? Mm -hmm. We should be able to. Uh, a lot of my strongest feelings that were a little bit more, my most negative feelings were towards the sip and paint industry. 
industry, which is funny because a lot of people know me as a sip and paint lady, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, but at first, I, I had worked at a um, sip and paint up in Latham. And while working there, I had learned the importance of teaching people how to create that never created before. So I was able to create a comfortable environment for them to feel safe and happy and to explore something that they haven't done since they were a child and to see their lights, out, you know, their eyes light up, how proud of the work they were creating. And then they have a new appreciation for the arts and artists, which was amazing to me. And I'm like, oh, this is, there's something here, you know, and to make revenue off of that as well. So it's like, I'm supporting myself while doing good for people with within the community, yeah. so. Yeah, that's great. So. What are some events and things you have done in the past with Paint Co's just to paint paint a picture <laughs> for folks to know like what, what if they were to go in there what would they what would they walk into? Yeah, so typical sip and paints, right? Where you come in step by step instructions um, to paint the painting that I'm painting. I also do work with children, do a lot of children's uh, parties. I also do an after school program where we learn the seven elements of art. It's a twelve week program, which is amazing. We also do drag and paint where we local work with local drag artists, which is amazing. They get to creatively express themselves. We've had people do um, zine release and uh, Book release parties of illustrations they have, um, art and healing, where we do intuitive painting and it's led by guided medita meditation, and then we get into um, the painting portion of it, which is really nice. So we have sound healing at the space. We also offer yoga. Um, we have had people come in and do experimental music, which is really exciting. So, oh wow! So you guys yeah. do a plethora of things there, we do. and it seems like all these things are very community, intentionally communal driven. So. Yes. Why is it important for spaces like Paint to exist with that inclusive, safe space feeling that you seem, because it seems like, you know, you love that when you were in the graffiti world, it seems like it's kind of reflective within your business, Paint Coho. So yeah, so I think it's think? extremely important for people to feel um, safe and comfortable so they can authentically, unapologetically, creatively express themselves without expectation or um, for any particular purpose or reason, right? Um, and no judgment. So by having a space like that and having people be able to come in and fully be who they are creatively uh, allows them to grow and then the space grows with them and then they grow out of the space and then this you know what I mean there's there's so much movement happening and I think that if people have safe spaces to start in or to move into the next chapter of their life and to expand upon um, that's that's lasting that lasts mm -hmm. outside of the space which is amazing it really does and that kind of circles back to you know Tony you know yes. you like how he created a safe <laughs> space for both you and I mm -hmm. and now Look at us, we're just flourishing within the creative economy and oh, community. So, well, I appreciate you, Alicia, and thank you for telling us about Paint Cohoes awesome. and all your creative endeavors. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Please welcome the Insolent Willies.
them in the park.
Thank you for joining us. For more arts, visit wmht.org slash aha. And be sure to connect with us on social. I'm Matt Rogowitz. Thank you for watching. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris fisher Melisardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. MIT Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts and we invite you to do the same.